everyone's eyes open and close. Science. What's up guys? Welcome back to my beauty YouTube channel where we beauty while we YouTube. Today we are going to be playing with all things Kosa's Cosmetics. I have their foundation, which we have wear tested before, but we're going to hot weather wear test it today. I have a whole mess of blushes that they sent me, both powder and cream. I have a whole bunch of lips today that we are going to either put on my face or swatch. And in addition to that, we have two things that I bought. These are the new 10 second eyeshadows from Kosa's. I got two different finishes. I got Globe and it is a satin. And then I got Supreme, which is a glitter. So I'm going to zoom you guys in. We're going to put all of the Kosa's on my face, every Kosa's. And what I don't put on my face, I will swatch for you guys for reference. So let's go ahead and start the video. Elephant in the room. Yeah, I got some Volbella put in my lips. They said that it was gonna be really subtle, but it's still really swollen and bruised. It's only been a few days and as a 32 year old lady, I'm still figuring stuff out. You know, the jury's out on whether or not I am glad that I did it. I just wanted to give you guys an update. My lips look normal today. That's all. But it is really fun to put on lipstick now, so just bear with me. So anyway, we're gonna start with this, the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. I have it in the shade 02. There are 10 shades. There were fewer than that when I bought this and they have come out with some more since. And that was, honestly, I feel like in response to them starting to be carried at Sephora. It was like, they got carried at Sephora, they went, hmm, we have a larger audience now, we need to go ahead and accommodate them. One of the biggest issues that I come across with this, and it's in the thumbnail of me going, of me trying it the first time, and that is that it will pill up if you have the wrong product underneath it, and or you don't let your skincare sink in. And I like to be gentle with it regardless. Even if I'm like really confident that nothing bad is gonna happen, I still just kind of pat it in. It has its own dry down, which is really nice, but it doesn't have any kind of stabilizers in it or silicones. It literally is mineral pigment suspended in oil, which is really interesting because I feel like a lot of mineral foundations are that, but for whatever reason, this combination of oils tends to be more luxurious and longer wearing than some of the top favorites on EWG that they sell at Whole Foods. Kosa's really prides themselves on <laughs> making quick makeup. That was so quick. It's so easy. I really do just pat it in. I don't recommend building this. There's not a lot of body to it. So when you try and build it, it it's just gonna push the product underneath that around. So there are limitations to this. One of them being powder, right? So we're going to be doing a full cream look today. I took a vote on my community tab about this. And a lot of you guys did say, I mean, it was not unanimous. A lot of you guys did say, you know, you'd be interested to know whether it does wear with a powder, whether it's even possible. I did it yesterday and I took pictures and I will show them to you guys. But I will say, just spoiler, just be careful with the rest of the product that you put on your face. You wanna keep it really, really light on top of it. Even in choosing a powder, I would say that the Ilia is probably the only one that I think is even close to lightweight enough. Even the cover effects will break up on this after a couple of hours. And of course I would hesitate to put any kind of silicone primer underneath it because it'll pill up. However, that's beautiful. And underneath that, I have the Drunk Elephant Umbra Tint and I was careful because I was afraid that it was gonna pill up a little bit, but one of you guys actually told me that that's been your favorite combo lately, and I was like, I gotta try it, I gotta try it. So I have no idea whether this is gonna dry down on its own. I can't, like my brain, I haven't had enough coffee to really negotiate in my brain what concealer would work best here, but I just like this one. So we're gonna go pretty gentle here. I washed all of my brushes yesterday, and so this is going to be an all fingers and sponge kind of look. Mainly, I'm just covering up my now melasma plus bruising, which is fun. The main thing that I was noticing about my face that I wanted to like, it's just not an insecurity thing about my lips. Mainly, I was just noticing that my top lip was starting to collapse, and I have a scar right here, and it was making my lip kind of wrinkle like I'd been smoking a pack a day for 10 years. And so I wanted something incredibly subtle because my top lip was kind of disappearing when I smiled, and I just thought it'd be fun to have bigger lips just to see. I don't know. I mean, one of the big misconceptions about putting any kind of Botox or fillers or whatever in your face is that they're permanent. Botox is 
insanely short term. It is a three month commitment. I got Botox for my wedding. A lot of you guys are like, why is your forehead so smooth? What's your secret? I'm like, Botox. But I didn't want to talk about it because I hadn't told my husband because I thought he would freak out. And I, honestly, I haven't told my mom either. So sorry, mom. But I was really frustrated with the 11s in between my eyes. I am not immune to that stuff. You can still be a confident individual and still want to know what you would look like if someone took a few years off of your face. You know, aging for the first time is definitely a weird experience. And so I did, I got Botox in my Globella, which is different from Volbella, which is the material that I have in my lips. But I also got it across my forehead. And honestly, you guys, A, it looked amazing for my wedding. B, it's super short term. But C, don't let anybody do it to you in piecemeal. I got my Globella touched up before my forehead completely wore off and I ended up with like these really crazy brows for a while. All of those things are true. All of those things are possible, but I don't have it right now. Like you can see everything moves the way that it's supposed to. And when I went in for my lips, I was like, I don't want to do Botox again. <laughs> Not for the foreseeable future. I just watched back on my videos and I was like, mm, I like it when my face moves. I mean, granted there are long term uh, results that come from it. Like the fact that kind of everything has relaxed a little bit. And I like those results. I like those long-term results, but also the Volbella is only supposed to last about 18 months. <sighs> this is a mood. My teeth were a decision. This is just a mood I'm in, you know? So it, if you leave me something nasty in the comments, I'm just going to delete it. So gorgeous. Let me zoom in and show you the, sur the, the surface, <laughs> the finish on this. So we do get some coverage out of this foundation. I think that that's something that a lot of you guys who bought this were like pleasantly surprised by. You were like, wow, you know, I thought it was just gonna be like a really chill tinted oil. It doesn't stay super duper like dewy gummy on the skin. Like I said, no silicones, no emulsifiers, nothing like that. It's just these really healthy carrier oils, no essential oils. It results in a really even distribution of this micro, micro, micro fine, mineral pigment and the way that it stays on the skin is just really flattering and pretty and forgiving and easy and my lip is bruised. <laughs> uh. But as you can imagine, maybe you can't imagine, an oil-based foundation, putting powder on top of that is very precarious. So like I said, go with something really, really lightweight and finely milled and kind of puff it on your face with one of those fluffy brushes that of course I don't have in front of me because I washed them all and they're downstairs. Don't try and buff, it's gonna move everything around. So I'm going to continue with this sponge right here and we are going to start with some cream blushes. The excited. So the first one is Tropic Equinox. These are called the Color and Light Cream Duos and they all come in the same packaging, which makes it a little bit tedious to figure it out. But the packaging is so beautiful. I think I said in the first video, I was like, if I were a compact, this is what I would look like. This is the Tropic Equinox combo. It is a nude blush that really works like a nice bronzer on me, a goldy bronzer. The shelf life on these is six months, which means that this is probably expired, but I'm gonna use it anyway because I D G A F. It's not that big of a deal to me. So that is one of them. One of the big things that you'll notice here is that all of the highlight is the same highlight. Tropic Equinox. This is called Velvet Melon. Wow, wow, that's gorgeous. We love an apricot peach shade. And then this, wow, also gorgeous, is Ape Muse. I'm gonna try and use all of them on my face today. So let's jump in here. I'm going to start with Tropic Equinox and I'm going to use that on my spongy. And we're gonna kind of build an aura of tanness on my face. <laughs> look tan in general. It's not a cool toned contour color, but I don't tend to mind that kind of thing. I'm not trying to create a new shape on my face. I'm not trying to trick the eye necessarily. I'm just kind of enhancing what I've already got. So I'm not super concerned with it 
not looking like bronzer, I guess. But you can see that is an unbelievably beautiful effect that you get from that. It's so, so pretty. And the next thing that I'm going to go in with, because we're going to use all of these on my face today, is Eighth Muse, the kind of mauvey pink shade. And I'm gonna tap my sponge in there and kind of move forward. It picks up the very same color that's in my lips, which is really, really nice. It's a very natural kind of purpley pink for me. When it shears out on my skin, it looks very natural. It sort of brings together the whole color story of my natural pigmentation. And I think that it's a very versatile shade. I think that often we undersell purples. When things are purple, at least for me, I'm always like, ooh, I don't like purple. I don't like purple on me. But when you get into like violets and fuchsias, purple can be really nice because it kind of anchors you in a cool tone a little bit, even though this doesn't look particularly cool toned on my skin. It's because it's sheer. It does have a complementary effect, very much like the PYT Heartbeat Cheek Color in Exhale that I use all the time. It tones down the warmth of the rest of my makeup. This does something similar. It has a very nice complementary vibe that keeps everything from looking overdone. Does that make sense? I don't know. But you can see it's pulling a very similar kind of natural mauve tone from my lips when I put it on. And I'm also, you know, putting that on my eyes. A lot of you guys are like, how do you do your eye looks? I just kind of do them as I go. <laughs> you know, it's like what I have left on my sponge. It just feels weird to me to ignore my eyes. And I'm like, well, you know, this right here where it meets the eye is very similar kind of if you're thinking of like, you know, longitude, latitude, right? Or like topography it hits around the same spot as right here. Like if you were to think about two distant mountains from one another, but they happen to be at the same sea level, that's what we're talking about. And so my cheeks hit about the same place that this does. And so if I were to create a really flattering shadow, I'd want to build it both places. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm teaching a painting class. I'm not sure. So you can see that that really bridges in a nice way the bronzer towards the rest of my skin. Now we're gonna go in for the pop, if you will. And that's going to be with the Velvet Melon shade. And I really, I just cannot get enough of all things this color. And we're gonna go right on the apples of my cheeks with that. And it just brightens everything up, makes everything really peachy. I'm gonna take that and put it kind of right on my lid towards the outside there. And that's gonna actually give us a little bit of actual color. It's not like we're building shadow. It's like, hey, here's the local color that I want you to perceive when you look at my face kind of thing. And these can be a lip and cheek. You can absolutely put these on your lips. I think that this particular shade would be gorgeous on the lips. Plus that peach bridges really, really nicely with sort of the natural peachiness that's in that golden bronzer. So we do, we end up with this really, really beautiful kind of gradient going on. And then of course we can't not use the highlighter. They gave us enough of it. I really wish that they would sell the highlighters separately and maybe give you the option of picking like a different highlighter to go with these. I do think that it's a little excessive that if I do own all three of these blushes, I now also have three of the same highlighter. It feels a little counterintuitive, but I do understand that they're going for minimalism. They're not going for you owning every single one, but I like to own every blush. That's so pretty. Ooh, that's so pretty. It really, it really finishes it off. It's such a pretty creamy, neutral champagne color that just makes the skin look a little bit glisteny, a little bit wet. So totally on brand here. <laughs> that was really quick. I just put on a foundation and three different blushes and a highlighter and it didn't really take me that long. And I did it all with the same sponge and I think that it's beautiful. So I want to go ahead and swatch the powder blushes that I'm not going to be using today because I'm not gonna put powder on top of this look. It would really, really be a disaster. But these are so beautiful. This one I bought a while back and this one they sent me. So this is Papaya 1972. I love this, but the only issue that I really have with it is that this blush right here over the course of the day will leave these kind of Kool-Aid stains on your face. It's like these little red dots. Something about the way that the pigment 
is resolved by whatever liquid or oil is in my makeup will make these certain pigment particles kind of expand and it just leaves these little tiny red dots all over my face and I just don't think that that's really recommendable <laughs> you know I'm not going to tell you to buy that because I think that that's a weird thing that it does this doesn't do that at least not in my experience so far this is Contra Chroma and it is absolutely such a beautiful mauvey bronzy shade again the highlighters are the same shade in all of the powder palettes so this is papaya 1972 this is contra chroma these are crazy pigmented like put them on with the most delicate hand with the fluffiest brush that you have because they're going to go on very similarly to the cover effects matte blush they just poof, you know, it's a high quality prestige luxury blush, however you want to say it. And for that reason, it behaves a lot like a, a NARS Exhibit A or something. Like you're going to have this blush for the rest of your life because you just need so little to get the effect. And that's coming from me, someone who takes a lot of pleasure in piling blush on my face. Okay, so I just did my brows really fast because that's not a Kosas product that I'm using today. So the next thing that we're going to be playing with are these. I was almost like, oh, we don't have an eye look today. Girl, do we have an eye look today? I am so excited about these. I got them in the mail and when I swatched them, I was really excited about this one and less excited about this one. But when I got them on my eyes, you guys, I'm telling you, honestly, we just have to, we just have to do this. So here is Globe. Like I said, this is a satin finish. They have several finishes that these came out in. And then I also got supreme which like i said is more of a glitter it doesn't look like it it looks like it's a satin too but when it blends out it goes a little more sheer and the other one stays a little bit more present if that makes sense but they're both absolutely gorgeous i just chose based on what i could see with my eyeballs and the color descriptions that they provided and i think i did pretty well i mean this is one of those colors like put it in any delivery system i will put it on my body you know give it to me in a nail polish give it to me in a bronze or give it to me in an eyeshadow i'm here for all of it and then a really pretty warm gold and honestly this one almost goes a little bit apricot i, I know that's a stretch but it's that yellow it actually works really nicely so they do call this a 10 second eyeshadow and it's basically your mineral eyeshadow suspended in a very thin formula so a lot of these are really creamy a lot of these meaning cream eyeshadows liquid eyeshadows they'll come really creamy and you know that seems like it's something that will work but then it tends to crease i think the thinness of this is kind of its advantage and it really does sheer out super quickly while maintaining its presence in a way that, well, guys, you know how Lidstar from Glossier, it has a thing it's going for and it gets 85% of the way there, but then we're like, what am I doing with this? It does kind of feel like a one trick pony, whereas this gives me options. This is just such an easy vibe. It does build. This is Supreme. So they dry down and once they dry down, you can build up the next layer pretty easily. So I'm going to go in again with, what is this called? Globe. Oh my God. I checked the name of it and I spilled it all over myself. Guys, be careful. These are so soupy that they actually will fall out of the container. Oh my gosh. That's such a shame. Cool, cool, cool. Cool. Lost a lot of product. That's okay. Anyway, gonna kind of build that here. And don't worry about the messiness. We can always clean that up, especially with a cream look, but I'm not going to shear that out as much. I'm just gonna kind of pat that so that it dries with a little bit more of that foiled impact. And then I'm going to also <laughs> put it under my eyes a little bit. I know, it seems really dangerous, my board is fast in danger, but this stuff is so forgiving. Like, I can't tell you how forgiving it is, especially 
the shade, I feel like it's just so close to my natural undertones. It still has really nice kind of creamy warm undertones that when you blend it out, I don't know, it just, it just looks like it grew there you know, but it gives you kind of a rock star smoky eye at the same time. So I'm going to now show you guys how I clean up a mess like this, because obviously it, I can't just leave it like that. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with a little bit more concealer, but I'm just going to dab it like on the back of my hand. This again is my cover effects concealer and I'm going to take a sponge and I'm going to just barely like dip that in there and just sort of spread that out. And then I'll go back underneath my eyes and just sort of clean up. And I'm not picking any more product up right away. I wanna make sure that that's completely blended in. But you can see I'm kind of making like a, an arc shape on the outside of my eye <laughs> that will contain all of that craziness. And you know, you can always put more eyeshadow on. I'm not the boss of you. I'm not your real dad. So that kind of contains it, right? And then I can take something like my Thrive Brilliant Eye Brightener. And of course, if I had more shades of the Kosa's 10 second eyeshadow, I would just use those, but I do not. And I'm just going to use that to add some light in where I want it. I could use the Kosa's highlighter, but it doesn't have a dry down to it. And so I think that it would kind of muck everything up a little bit too much. Sorry, the light is changing. I think the sun is finally coming up. So I'm going to use that to highlight right here. And it just adds a little bit of dimension so that you can really see the pop of that coppery bronzy color. It's not coppery. Like I said, this is a powder formula that is suspended in this material. And so it is not like the lid star in the sense that once it's down, it's down. You can still move this around with your finger or with a brush. It's just not liquidy for very long. So just bear that in mind. And I'm going to throw on a liner and some mascara real quick because I do feel like with this much pigment on my eyeballs, I need a liner. Okay, so real quick, I did my eyeliner and my mascara. They're both Thrive. I used the Nally Brown Eyeliner and I just smudged it. I didn't want like a really clear defined line. I wanted this to be a really blown out kind of smudgy eye look with some boundaries. It's important that there's boundaries, you know, you don't want it to just be smudged all over your face. And then I just put mascara on. So now we get to play with lips and I have so many here that we really need to make some decisions because they do stain. <laughs> they will stain your lips. And so if I put all of these on, they're gonna get everywhere. Like I really recommend picking one and sticking with it. So I not only have their regular lipsticks that are a beautiful formula, I didn't like the first one that I tried because I literally chose the one shade that I don't think looked very good on me and I had a really hard time using it. It could have also been that I didn't, I wasn't that good at makeup at the time. But I have four new shades to show you guys today as well as these. These are the Kosa's Sport Lip Balms. They're these tinted lip balms. Guys, I was not expecting these to be that tinted. Look at this. That's a lot of pigment for a chapstick. My responsibility here is to convey to you guys that this is not a lip balm that you can put on mindlessly without a mirror. I think that the word sport being in the name makes you think that you're gonna just throw this on, no big deal. It does come in a clear shade, so you could do it with that. And the formula is gorgeous. It is minty, it's plumping, it's wonderful. These are very, very, very pretty shades on the lip. They are just not what I would consider to be like a workout lip balm. There's, there's nothing sporty about them to me. They're just a very pretty sheerer lipstick formula that happens to have some mint in it. That's my take. Mm, that's a bummer. They like melted in transit and they just can't seem to get their lives together. If anyone knows a really good trick to get a lipstick to go back in its bullet and stay there, let me know. But these are rendered kind of unusable right now. I don't own a lip brush. So both Rosewater and Undone are both in pretty sad shape. So we have Rosewater, Undone, Phoenix, and Violet Fury. This is the most beautiful formula, you guys. It's so, so crazy pigmented. It's super, super creamy. It is so even when it goes on, there's just something so nourishing about it. And 
it smells like heaven. It smells like vanilla <laughs> in like a Mac lipstick kind of way, but you know that they use something natural, which is just wonderful. So I don't really think there's any getting around the fact that I want to put Violet Fury on my mouth right now. It is absolutely the most exciting shade. It's the shade that I've been looking for for a really long time. Long time ago, I tried Eau Naturelle Cosmetics on my channel, not super impressed. And I got a sample of one of their lipsticks called Sangria and I put it on and I was like, oh, this is gonna look terrible on me. And you guys were like, that looks amazing on you. The only thing I didn't like about that shade was that it was metallic, I'm not a metallic lip girl. This is just a regular non-metallic cream. We're just gonna do this. I always like to take the pigment off of the very top of my cupid's bow. I feel like when I let those points do their full pointy thing, they're just a little bit much. It's just very exaggerated. I have a very pointy cupid's bow. So incredibly rich formula, super saturated, not long wearing. It's not a dry down, suck you dry, totally immovable kind of thing. It's definitely just a regular cream lipstick, but my goodness, does it steal the show? Isn't it so, so pretty? So pretty. I'm obsessed with that shade, but it does make me want to put some more blush on. <clears throat> Where did you think that you were? Going to go back in with Eighth Muse here and maybe uh, do a little bit more magenta-ing because I want to magenta right along with my mouth. You didn't know magenta was a verb, did ya? Did ya? Oh, destroy my life, okay. A little bit, little bit more of the velvet melon. So <laughs> this is the look. This is something that I haven't gotten to do lately. Just like really play with color. <laughs> and I actually really love how the whole look comes together. Normally I wouldn't do a whole lot of eye and a whole lot of lip, but there's something about these eyeshadows that is so seamless. They go on so easily and the way that it looks, it really just kind of goes with the rest of my face. Sun, now you decide that you're gonna be all blown out? Really? Okay, so now's a good time to talk about the brand and the ingredients. We're gonna make this pretty quick. So the brand says about themselves, we take our name from the philosophy of the five coses of self. According to this philosophy, there are five intersecting and connecting layers of self that communicate with each other. A physical layer, a vitalizing layer of energy, a sensory mental layer, a discerning intellectual layer, and a layer of truthful bliss. Beauty lives in each of these layers, not just in the physical. I like that. We love a heady queen. That's kind of touchy-feely and woo-woo, and you guys know that is uh, at least one of my coses. So like I said, the tinted face oil does come in, oh, I'm sorry, not 10 shades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It comes in 16 shades. It just happens to go to 10 and then have in between like 0.5. So that's why I thought it only had 10. It goes from one, two, three, 3.5, 4, 5, 5.5, you know what I mean? Key ingredients, avocado oil, red raspberry oil, jojoba oil, metafoam oil, rosehip seed oil, and green tea seed oil. Those are the carrier oils that are carrying all of the mineral pigments in this and they agree really nicely with my skin. They are cruelty-free, vegan, gluten-free, free of parabens, silicone, sulfates, phthalates, mineral oil, PEG, and petrolatum. They have the cocoa caprolate as the first ingredient that is kind of a polymer emulsifier-ish thing that's derived from coconut. But essentially that's the closest thing to like a stabilizer that's in this. The rest of it is going to be all of those really healthy oils and at least from what I can tell, and, uh, and the iron oxides that serve as pigmentation. The sun is being really aggressive. I'm sorry about my lighting changing. And price-wise, the tinted oil is $42 and you use so little of this when you use it. it. An absolute whisper goes a long way. So it is a really great investment if it's the kind of thing that you are into. The cream blush is $34. Big ingredient call outs here are rice bran, rosemary extract, moringa oil, and jojoba oil. No real red flags in any of their ingredients. But the ingredient list is a lot longer for the blushes. Obviously, they're just a lot more stable. The powder also has rice bran, rosemary extract, moringa oil, and jojoba oil in it. Much shorter uh, list. Powders are a lot easier to kind of keep clean. And so we're looking at mica as the first ingredient. It all matters where you get your mica, where you source your mica from. 
uh, Kappa Trade Glyceride, Nylon 12, Silica, and then a bunch of really nice kind of carrier oils and then your Tocopherol because there's vitamin E and daggum everything. Big vitamin E has everybody by the throats. Titanium dioxide and iron oxides for. Pigmentation. Their lipsticks, which I just, I can't get enough of, have a, have a lot of, have a lot of stuff in them. All products are gluten, egg, and cruelty-free, but their lipsticks are not vegan because they do have beeswax in them. They also have microcrystalline wax. They've got orange oil, jojoba oil, uh, you know, tocopherol, uh, candelilla wax, castor oil, coconut oil. So no big red flags, but it is a much longer ingredient list. So make sure that you read these things for yourself, whether they pertain, you know, to your particular needs before buying, don't just trust my word on it. And the 10 second eyeshadows. So very interesting product. They say the 10 second eyeshadow is cruelty free, vegan, gluten free, free of paraben, silicone, sulfates, phthalates, mineral oil, PEG, petrolatum. First ingredient is water, orange extract, mica, alcohol. There is alcohol in these and you will feel it a little bit, especially if you have any kind of sensitive skin. When this is drying down, your skin will get a little bit warm. I mean, there's definitely something to be said for the fact that alcohol makes something into a liquid, but then evaporates really quickly. It's why it's in most of your hair products and things like that. But if you don't want to put alcohol on your eyes, just keep that in mind. And then the rest of it is just oils, a little bit of rice starch and your pigmentation. So again, I mean, look at this more closely so that you can see whether it matches your specific needs and keep the alcohol in mind. But for me, it was just like a temporary, very, very quick kind of warmth on my skin and then it went away. So before we jump to the wear test, I'm just gonna do one more zoom in and kind of show you how all this looks on my face. So even though we used like a different brand of concealer because they don't have a concealer, I feel like it communicated really well on top of the foundation. Everything settled in really nicely. You can see it has a really nice blurring quality. I think it has to do with the different mineral pigments that are in the foundation. They're so finely milled that the way that it sits on the skin is almost like a satin mat which doesn't make any sense because it's such a lightweight formula. It shouldn't have any kind of like mattifying dry down, but it does. It's really, really nice. It's so, I can't tell you how light it is on the face. Like it is the thinnest thing you've ever worn with probably the most coverage for the amount of product that you have on your face. It's just a very effective concentrated formula and one little bottle of it is gonna last you ages. Other than that, oh my gosh, look at these eyeshadows. Look at them, look at them, look at them, guys. I love them. And then this lip, I mean, don't mind my like bruised, swollen lips, but it is just not every color that I can just wear like this. You know, like a really good, saturated, rich formula where I feel like when I put it on, it's not completely sealing the show, but also the pigment is so easy to work with and it's so consistent. When I used it the first time, I don't know what shade I had, but I felt like it wasn't very consistent. This is super, super consistent. It's not skippy or anything and it builds really, really nicely. You guys, it's not just the cream look that's balmy. I'm a little bit sweaty. So I'm going to wear this for the rest of my diddly day. I have some work to do. I have some editing to do <laughs> as it turns out. And we will see after eight hours how this wore. And I will also throw in the after photos for when I wore it yesterday with powder on top and the full powder look that you guys are used to seeing. So I will see all of you, well, in about three seconds for you, but in at least eight hours for me. Toodles. Hello, welcome back. Welcome back me. It is the end of my day. I've been wearing this face of makeup for better or for worse for over eight hours now. Let's start with the foundation. So. About two hours in, I reread a bunch of your YouTube comments on my community tab, and I had kind of read them last night and there were not nearly as many as there are now of people saying, I would like you to lightly powder some spots. Not only that, I had looked at myself in my mirror of truth down there in my bathroom and my under eyes were like already starting to deteriorate after two hours. And I was like, nah. it was basically where I had put the concealer on top of the Kosas foundation. And I was like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to go patch things up. I'm going to go dust the lightest whisper of Ilia powder on my T-zone and underneath my eyes, just to give this a fighting chance, because honestly, it seems like the way that you guys would wear it anyway. That said, I think it turned out pretty great. I do look in the mirror, especially from far off, and even with the powder, I see 
shine. And the shine, you guys saw it, was there from the beginning. It's not greasy, it's just a look. <laughs> you have to decide that that's the look you're going for because this is gonna be kind of balmy, shiny, dewy. Can you powder it down completely? I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't have enough stability for that. Just pick a different foundation. There are tons out there. This one's not the one for that. However, for my folks out there who have very dry skin, and or aging skin, this is gonna be a very hydrating option for you that stays movable but also dries down on its own without powder. So the reason that I felt like I needed to powder this was because I put concealer on top of it. If you wore this on its own, you wouldn't really need to powder it. If you don't feel like you need to highlight certain areas or have extra coverage in certain areas, you wouldn't necessarily need to powder this. And so if you are the kind of person, we've talked about this before, this is the ideal foundation for the woman who is putting her makeup on maybe without a mirror in the carpool lane at her kid's school just trying to get her life together in the morning it's that fast it's that foolproof and it's not meant to then go over tedious on top of it is not meant for a full beat this is about as full beat as you can go that's the lowdown on the fan the fan that's the lowdown on the foundation i have no idea what's wrong with me right now the cheek products are gorgeous they stay completely true to color all day they do have a little bit more of like an emollient thing to them a little bit more presence on your skin than the foundation does and so i feel like they hold their ground really easily they don't do any moving around or anything but they stay really balmy dewy do not dry down on their own the lipstick, you know, it's not perfect, but I haven't touched it up all day. I drank a smoothie for lunch. It's just, it's kicking butt. And I know for an absolute proven fact that when I clean this off, my lips are going to be stained hot pink maybe for the next three days. You know, pick your poison, but you know, if you want something that's going to stick around for an event or for a full day of work and be that presence, that really awesome like power lip, this is the formula. I love this formula. I'm really excited to have it in as many shades as I do. In fact, do you guys want to put Phoenix on on top of this and just see so you guys can see the red? Because this is like almost gone now. Here's Phoenix. Look at that. Is that not the most beautiful red? Ooh. Mm, I love that, but I wanted to show it to you guys. The other ones are very neutral. This one is one of those, you just had to see it, you know? It's a really gorgeous red, and this formula is to die for. It's absolutely beautiful. The only other thing to show you guys is the eyeshadow, which I'm crestfallen about, honestly. I need to continue testing it because I wore it the first time. I got too excited. I was already wearing an eye look and I just put it on on top of other eyeshadow and I was super, super impressed by it. But I don't necessarily think that that's something that you should expect from a liquid eyeshadow. You shouldn't have to put regular eyeshadow on underneath it to make it work. That said, I didn't put any eyeshadow on underneath it and it didn't work. It is creasing like crazy. I have deep set eyes. Everyone's eyes open and close science and therefore you're going to have opportunities to crease in most cases but mine are like I'm crease rich so um let me zoom in and show you what I'm talking about so look at my eyelids it is quite a shame because this is such a beautiful finish on an eyeshadow and I'm gonna continue using them I'm not mad about it. I even think that on top of a powder look, they would behave better. But I'm not, I don't know, I guess I'm not that surprised now that I know the ingredients list because there's nothing in there that is going to be like heat and movability resistant. There's no dimethicone. You know, that's like what keeps the Thrive Brilliant Eye Brightener from moving around is that it's got a lot of really great stabilizers in it. And so, you know, if you aren't a silicone person, then you're gonna have to do a little bit more work to try and get something like this to perform. You can see the complexion looks about the same. Nothing really broke up on me this time, um, not even where the concealer was. I didn't put enough powder on there to make it heavy. Really all it did was set the under eyes, which I highly recommend if you're gonna wear a concealer. And I think that it worked out really, really nicely. Quick smash or pass. Smash with all the caveats provided. Smash, 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 except for the Papaya 1972, which leaves those little red dots on my face, which I'm kind of disappointed by, but I'm still gonna use it. Cannot smash hard enough, these lipsticks. And then these guys, the Kosa Sport, gorgeous. They are just lightweight cream lipsticks. They are not a sport lip balm, keep that in mind. And finally, these make me sad, I'm disappointed. I'm going to keep trying to work with them, see what I can get out of them, seeing if putting on top of a powder would make any difference, but as of this moment in time, these are not 
really like groundbreaking and that really upsets me because you guys saw how excited I was about them. So those are my thoughts on all things Kosas. If this was helpful, if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you do want to keep hanging out with me on my channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.